You think anything is random? Everything's intelligent. So why is it that sometimes you feel joy and sometimes you feel whatever the other side of joy is? Fear or depression. Sometimes you feel free. Sometimes you feel not free. Cage, hopeless, no way to go, depressed, nothing means anything anyway, whatever. Why do some things in life, some activities, some people, some thoughts, some emotions, why do some of these bring you in a state of ecstasy? And why do some of these bring you in a state of depression, deprived of joy, deprived of feeling connected? There is a reason. It's not random. And I know we like to dismiss it because it's too complicated to wrap our minds around. And it simply takes some time to start to understand this. It takes some time to understand what I'm about to speak about. So you may find some reluctance in yourself, which is fine. You can either go or sit in silence or do something for yourself or whatever works for you. Or you can save it for another time when you do realize that there is a benefit to being happy. Whether that's spiritually accurate or not, whether that's non-dually accurate or not, you realize that at some point, again, after the seeking has come and gone, there is a value to happiness. There is a real value to joy. Now, we all know, even our scientists, not that they're all the way on the bottom, but still, <laughs> even our scientists, even our Newtonian scientists, I think, realize that everything in the universe works in terms of vibrations, frequencies, rates of cycles, or in short, just vibration or frequency. Everything. Everything has a particular frequency. The wall over there has a particular frequency, which is why it appears as it does, which is why it has the color that it does, da, 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 everything. All the properties of a particular expression of consciousness, or as scientists likes to call it, matter, is because of frequency. This goes for everything. So there's no distinction between outside and inside. So this applies to your mind as well as your emotional being. Now the representation of a low frequency as we know it would be depression. And you can actually feel it. Even if it's not yourself, you can feel it if you're around people. I can feel it if I'm around people. If there's a, and I don't mind it. It's fine, it's beautiful, and I love it too. So don't feel like you have to manage yourself around me ever. But when you're sitting in a room with somebody that's like really depressed or really angry or whatever it is, you all can feel the energetic effects that has on your whatever, your feel of presence in this physical focus. You can feel it. It's a, it's a low frequency distortion. It's like you're almost standing in front of a bass a speaker, you know, in those... House parties they have. <laughs> but not like a soothing ohm, more like a, almost like radiation. And you feel they're poisoning their body doing so as well. It's just a low frequency energy. It's just out of alignment. Now when somebody is really joyous, especially when they're joyous and they're letting it be at the same time, but not disengaging from it, calling it anything, accepting and raising the joy, the bliss, the happiness, the passion, but at the same time, letting it be, so that if it changes into something else, that's too, that's good too. That's real joy, the real joy of being able to experience or see joy, or shall we say holistic positivity, even in those circumstances that we've been taught to label negative. That's real joy. When you feel that around somebody, you feel healed, you're healing. Ah, it feels aligned. And this works for yourself internally as well. So the value of joy or the purpose of joy, it's almost like that's the only little thing that's been given to us in the physical focus or in the physical embodiment to let us know if we're doing something in alignment or out of alignment. That's its value. It's your only, only compass here. You don't know why, you don't know what, you don't know how. All you know is what you're experiencing right now. And what you're experiencing right now can either resonate, and if it resonates, zzz, we could call that an increase in frequency. It's scientific. It's not really woo-woo, unless you want to call it woo-woo. Mm -hmm. To me, it's not woo-woo. The language of it is a bit woo-woo, but I haven't figured out 
a better way to describe it yet. But the experience I'm conveying is not woo-woo. It's very practical. It's very real. It has very real benefits to your life and those around you and your purpose here. It's more purposeful to me at this point than sitting around and pretending enlightenment is something naked. That has its value too. But if that's drawn out for too long, it starts to become non-resident. Those who seek for many, many years are doing something wrong. Sorry to say that. You're doing something wrong to yourself. You're not doing something wrong that you should be doing right, but you're not listening to yourself. You're not giving yourself enough credit. You're not listening to your inner compass. You're listening to teachers. So if I ever become such an obstacle, please, by all means, drop me. Take only what resonates for you. It's very important. I would never want to be an impediment or an example with which you can compare yourself in a negative way. If I form any sort of impediment within your being, in your mind, then don't show up anymore or drop me out of your mind or find an acceptance for it or whatever works. But don't continue along that path. Don't think that I have the truth. You have the truth. There is no one truth. There is moment by moment truth, which is tuned into by listening to what brings you happiness, awe, excitement. If you listen to that, then that means that that's the absolute truth in that moment. If that means to light up a cigarette, that means lighting up a cigarette is the absolute truth of the entire universe within you in that moment. Nothing any of the teachers ever said or declared is more truthful in that moment than if you're truly, genuinely, holistically excited about lighting a cigarette. Your only truth is yourself, your inner compass. That's more important than anything I've ever said, say or will say. So if ever I change my mind on this subject, and I say, no, I do have the truth, and you should listen to what I say, and please take my words as I say them now, more to heart than what I'll say then. I don't anticipate that will happen. But